Hello and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. Hi, I'm Larry. I'm Nick. I'm Charlie. And I'm Josh. And I play the drums. Nick, welcome back. It's great to welcome be back, back, man. Great to have you back for another season. Uh, and uh, today we're going to be going over The Dead by James Joyce. <laughs> the last uh, work we went over by his, excluding the overall general realm, uh, back in Season 4 was when we went over Araby in Season 1, which is our most viewed video on our channel with over 4,000 views. That's so, amazing. But uh, the discussion starter that I have for the dead is... Can they ironic come back? Ironically enough, most of the dead is set in a lively atmosphere and has to do with the living. After the circumstances that take place at the end of this piece, namely Greta telling Gabriel about Michael Fury, uh, her friend, is there really an appreciation, especially on Gabriel's part, for what it is to be living or toward the people that are living? Wow. Okay. You just dropped that bomb. And... <laughs> I was not expecting that question. <laughs> His relationship, his appreciation for the living? His appreciation for uh, I want life, to put that away. living, and uh, what it really means to be living and interacting with the living. Well, when he gave that speech, he was, you know, it seemed like he didn't want to, but he had to. And he, I mean, he had to give that speech. He went, no. Um, as far as the speech is concerned, I think that it was a bit, uh, he was, he's very much into his material and yeah. he's talking to an audience that is not so much so because yeah. he wanted to go over uh browning but they uh he didn't think that that would be the audience to talk about it with uh, they'd right. be more into shakespeare and, yeah the, like I, I feel like the speech he gave is not the speech that he intended on giving mm -hmm. like, the, 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 i think he was going to change it too i mean when he had the, the little yeah. yeah well they thought about adding a quotation in yeah. there about the about uh about hospitality, but then the whole thing ended up being about hospitality. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. The whole... No Browning, no, uh, none of the other headings, really, mm -hmm. that he brought up, that he was look, thinking over in his head. Yeah. Yeah, so I think the speech changed um, because of the way that people were looking at him there. Mm -hmm. Right? It seemed like his deal was that he's more of a continental thinker, right? Like, he wants... Yeah. He, he's not... He's sick of Ireland. He says at one point, yeah. mm. and uh, on the Irish, yeah. So you know he's gonna here. He is in this Irish house with Irish family and Irish people everywhere. And, and potatoes. He's, he's gonna and give potatoes. some continental speech. I mean, they're laughing at him for wearing galoshes. Mm. Yeah, because if they wear it on the continent. Mm. Oh, the continent. They had to even explain what galoshes were to mm -hmm. his aunt. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't even know what galoshes were until then. I was well aware. I they I've seen people wear. I have big they ones. Call getting, getting, getting. So. But going back to that question about the living, and I noticed near, closer to the end of the story that his relationship with his wife was very strong. Mm -hmm. So seeing how it was affecting her probably gave him that feeling of, okay, she's feeling this way because of this. I saw a little bit of like he would, thought he was getting compared, mm -hmm. but... I feel mm -hmm. that, like, I mean, I think at the end of the story he was able to fall fall asleep, but, like, he, I feel that he was able to appreciate life a lot more. Hearing that. To an extent, I would say, but I think more so the fact that he, he realized, I think it was a wake-up call, because, uh, yeah, because the leading, whole idea, all leading up to that, he was ready to make his move, and, you know. Because he, he realized that there was somebody out there that uh, admired and appreciated and loved uh, Greta more than he did. Yeah. And he saw so much more into And then, because beforehand, it seemed like he was looking more at, uh, I think physical appearance was a, a greater, yeah. just the mm -hmm. lines of uh, the whole idea that, uh, uh, the whole idea that when he saw her sleeping, he didn't see her as his wife anymore. He didn't feel that he had that connection. And then he also makes the remark of the fact that uh, 
He did not like to say even to himself that her face was no longer beautiful, but he knew that it was no longer the face for which Michael Fury had braved death, as per page 191. Mm -hmm. And then he said, and then there's that whole idea that uh, 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 the whole idea that uh, he wasn't necessarily looking at the character as opposed to the fact that he was more so looking at what she had looked like back then and whether or not this is what he could appreciate. Beauty fades. Uh, there's a saying, beauty fades uh, but uh, character doesn't or some, I'm, I'm paraphrasing quite loosely here but you know, even though you know, you may not your beauty may decline over the years but it's what's really on the inside and every spouse should accept and really must accept that and still be content i you know oh i want to go old with you and, and and willow away with you in the nursing home well go go ahead and do with that but that's what you, you know because back then people did this very strange thing called letter writing <laughs> and they would you know give it to their hopefully to be a significant other and you know, some of the notes, I've actually read some love notes from the past, and by today's, by today, the people would look at it and say, this is pure sap. Well, let's say something much different, but I'm not going to say it on camera. Long story cut short, back then, it was much more sweeter. Like, I want to live my life with you, I want to grow old with you, I want to die with you, well, okay, <laughs> you're making a pact here. So, and if he's ready to make a move on her in the hotel room, and I think he was upset with the porter for taking too long. Yeah. I could be wrong, but... Um, I think he was, he was the, anxious to get up there. He was yeah. anxious to go up and bake cookies. The spark we'll just ignited that in way. her, though. Uh, but not the cookies I uh, like. Uh, prior, though, when Mr. Darcy was singing the uh, the lass at uh, yeah. Ogram, which right. it's an interesting... Uh, choice of song because it's a bit parallel to uh, Greta and Michael's very own relationship. Uh, Michael. It's about the... Yeah, Michael Fury. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. The, how it's about the long, their longing for one another and uh, uh, he goes to see her and uh, but... And he was in the him. hospital, was he not? Because mm -hmm. how would he... He was in the hospital. Michael was. Yeah, but in, saying... in the song, it's very right, much... Right. Uh, she goes looking for him and dies in the process, but yeah. when he get, goes uh, and now that's true sees love. her, uh, he you break he goes and sees what what happened because I think it was a dream, yeah. and he uh, he dies himself at the very end of the song. I mean, it's um, you're breaking out of a hospital because, I mean, I'm assuming that's what he did. He left the hospital when maybe there was a change of orderlies and staff. Slipped out this fire fire escape. Um, now you can't even go into a hospital without hearing. Do you have insurance? Mm. Um, yeah, but he uh, he got out of there. And he he went to her, and then and then as because a result, his heart he died. Was, yeah, he truly mm. loved her. Yep, not for her looks, for her love is well, a powerful thing. Yep, it's and the that's power I love, and that's what Gabriel begins to realize that it, it's much more than baking cookies. The uh, just the the base, the yeah. general things that everybody would assume would be the uh, great elements of uh, one's life. Oh, well, the whole thing mm -hmm. comes to a shock as a shock to him, you know. So he's been married to this woman for some time, presumably, and mm -hmm. never knew anything of, that she was carrying around that kind of um, emotional attachment to somebody else. So I mean, it's very surprising, mm -hmm. and I think uh, what we see in the end is he's you know just trying to process it as best he can. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't think there's any, anything to judge in it. I know. And he still, uh, thinks that there may be more, uh, details that she didn't tell him. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I was in the situation he was in, I would probably have done the same thing where it just let her be, let her be with her emotions and just kind of look back and see how, like how, how she was explaining about Michael, how she felt like she felt mm -hmm that way towards him and I just it was genuine love yeah. it yeah. was not well, cosmetic love it's idealized in a way yeah. too because you know what I mean they didn't know each other that well 
um, you know, they dated for a couple of months and he's dead. So he kind of becomes an idealized, perfect kind of yeah. person to her in a way, too. Right. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. yep. Amen, brother. That Amen. no living man might be able to live up to. Mm -hmm. And that he might not have even been able to live up to if things had gone differently and they had gotten married. Already. Was there uh, anything that somebody uh, had wanted to brought, bring up that didn't have to do with uh, the uh, major events that took place within the uh, text? I kind of read, I kind of judged the book by the co by the title, mm -hmm. and I thought it was going to be more darker. But don't get me wrong, it, it was a good story. I like how they were able to bring that at the end and just be like, yeah, yeah here you go. So it was definitely, definitely a cool read. I enjoyed it. I agree. I thought that it was going to be, it, it was going to explore something different and be, and death would have been a much greater part within the text. But I think that with what happened, it overloomed. Uh, it was almost as if they were, uh, it was almost as if uh, you have this completely dry piece of paper. And then once, uh, once you get to that part with uh, the mention of Michael Fury and death, the uh, the spill just takes over the yeah. complete Got it. text. Actually, looking looking back at it, like everything was so happy and joyful mm -hmm. in the whole story, and, and then that one, yeah. yeah, once that death was mentioned, mm -hmm. everything turned. Like the emotions came in, and that's that's how it is in real life. Like everything can be happy, and then the next thing you know, you get get a memory or death happens, and it's just. Boom, like that. Yeah, and the death yeah, makes yeah. everything else meaningless, including everything that happened at the mm -hmm. uh, gathering. Yeah, and because the story's probably what, maybe three quarters or even a little more, like preamble, right? Before we get into that hotel room. Yeah. Where, it's so. like It's a Wonderful Life, where 70% of the uh, movie is about the closing of the bank. Yeah, I mean, it, but it's just all kind of leading up to that little bit of at the end, that, that, that you yeah. know, where. I mean, where the story gets its title from, where, where the yeah. main meaning of it is. Mm -hmm. Everything leading up to, you know, the last very little bit is kind of mm -hmm. just building up to it, but you don't even know it is. Yeah. It's very strange. I mean, I wanted to say one last thing, um, on a, a little bit of an aside. It's actually, I think, healthy to have those little, um, shall we say, emotions. Mm -hmm. Because I, too, will have those emotions where I miss somebody who has gone before me, and instead of going out and shrinking, I'd rather just sit home and just put on some music, and that's a lot healthier. I mean, of course I'm going to have a pack of Oreos. I mean, mm -hmm. come on here. Chuck some Snapple, maybe some wine. But other than that, I'm, you know, I'm reliving the good, happy memories I had with that person. And... You know, even though it's hard for me, because in March I'm coming up on the passing of my grandmother, I don't want to go too far, because I don't want to eat any more salad. <laughs> but um, it's okay to have those moments where you need to have, let me go to my room, have a good cry for myself, because some people do other things, and it's not as healthy. That's interesting. So it's an overweight person. Mm -hmm. And the Irish, you know, I'm part Irish, and yeah, well, me too. mournful people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Very mournful. Uh, I was always told the Irish never mourn. Mm -hmm. They always, they always party. Mm -hmm. But then again... They, they got that, they have the Catholic influence, too. Yes, very strong Catholic influence, but, you know. Do we have any uh, final thoughts in general? I'm sad. Um, but it's okay. I was just thinking... I'm gonna get no, you. but yeah, like, uh, you know, how that whole thing, right? Like, uh, like I was saying, you know, about how just... Uh, you know, maybe one fifth of the story or less. Yeah, is where it really starts to unroll. I'm gonna get happy. Excuse me, um, real quick. The whole thing is is it shows the power of death, right? And mm -hmm. what I think that's what I think that's what the point might have been is that uh, you know a little death goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hate that word. Cookie? No, thank you. Mm -hmm. Cookie? Uh, that's it. I'll take it. Yeah, I would say, but it is the last fifth of it. About eight pages. So. Okay, now I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> cookies help. Eat cookies, not crack. It starts to color the whole evening, right? Like, he starts getting self-conscious. Mm -hmm. Feeling like he's being compared and thinking about how he conducted himself that night. Feeling, mm. feeling like he came up short. 
even though all, up until then everything seemed like it went fine. And then just, you know, in the, in the, in the revelation at the very end, everything gets colored different. Mm -hmm. Yep. When he starts thinking about his aunt. I completely yeah, agree. Yeah, inevitable. Yeah. Like, I was reading the story, and I was like, all right, where, this, where is this going? Like, is it going to get any better? But, of course, it was good anyway. Mm -hmm. But once death was mentioned, I was like, ah, all right, I see what's mm -hmm. there. It was really a, uh, a thought-provoking uh, James Joyce work, and I think uh, James Joyce, uh, as I've mentioned before, it's his intention to be a challenging writer as if... Uh, if you if you want to understand the work, you have to pay complete attention to it. You have to keep an eye on each of the details. Uh, he intentionally likes to complicate his works. Thanks. Mm -hmm. The Dead, though, is quite a strong work of his. Uh, it's uh, featured in uh, Dubliners, which uh, here's my copy uh, from uh, Bantam Classics. Uh, it's the last story in Dubliners. It's also the longest at... Uh, a total of 44 pages. A little more of 43, but uh, the uh, it's, a, it's his longest uh, work within this collection, but it's also a very... Uh, a lot of characters. There oh, is yeah. a lot of characters, uh, but I think that's... Uh, he's trying to... Uh, distract you kind of that's what i felt it's somewhat of a distraction yeah. but he's uh putting together a, a sense of uh setting and uh livelihood yeah, and scale too. Mm -hmm. yeah. be sure to join us next time for another episode of literary gladiators and for now keep reading